focus only. We will focus only on these practical ways of management. However, we will not talk about the ordinary and conventional uh, uh, single lens we use usually for uh, giving to our myopic patients, but we will talk about uh, the advances and new techniques in this field. Uh, I think you can just you can just share the slides for the friends here. No need to have this uh, show at the right side because I want to make it uh, bigger for some of them using their mobiles. So uh, I want to tell that I'm not uh, have no financial interest or relationship to disclose, and also I'm not affiliated by each of the companies that may I use their products and uh, designs in this show. However, part of uh, the materials I use in this uh, lecture was adapted from the International Association of Contact and Educator course that held in the year 2018, and also from the Brian Holden Academy and WCO advocacy course that I took in the year 2019. Okay, before to establish to the main topic of tonight, I would like to just talk in brief about uh, uh, myopia as an epidemic condition. So as an eye care providers, it is not hidden from all of us that uh, the rapid rates or the dramatic rates of myopia worldwide. So many also report an increase in the prevalence in different countries. And actually it reached about uh, 75% in among school children in children in the some Asian countries such as uh, China, uh, Singapore, and Hong Kong. So uh, not only the prevalence of myopia increased, but also the the degree of myopia also raised. That means the prevalence of uh, high myopia, which is very dangerous increased rapidly and jumping very high, uh, which put the stress in the uh, until came as the concern in some countries or in those countries now affected by the condition. So in this diagram I want to show the rapid race of myopia in the world. So I have six pie charts here. Each one uh, represents uh, an era or a decade of life from the year 2000 and ended in the year 2050. So 10 years ago, in the year 2010, the prevalence of myopia was 25% from the total population of the world, which approximately around 2 billion people that are affected by the condition. So uh, this year, the year 2020, the prevalence also increased to reach up to 30% or 30 plus percent from the total population. And it is being expected that by the year of 2050, I'm not sure that the cases are working here. So we expect that by the year 2050, the prevalence will increase to reach uh, up to half of the world population. That means 50% of uh, the world population will be affected by some degrees of, of myopia, starting from mild or low to advanced or severe myopia. So the high myopia prevalence also increased. So it was around 2% only in the year 2000. Uh, and it is expected to be around 10% uh, in the years of 2050, which approximately around 100 of million. So that means 100 of million of population will be affected by the myopia or affected, or affected by the uh, uh, progression of myopia, or I mean the pathological myopia. So uh, according to the race of myopia prevalence, it could be expected that uh, many things will be increased. So increase in the prevalence of people who had uh, uncorrected refractive error, also raised in the number of 
uh, blind or visually impaired uh, people. Also, the brevness of contract, glaucoma, core retinal uh, detachments, and what we call it myopia or myopic uh, retinopathies will raise according to the increase of the prevalence. And also, the increase of, in the need of uh, eye care providers or eye care services. And all these consequences actually will put stress in the economy of the countries that affect content as well as the quality of life people. So according to this also, uh, these consequences motivates the uh, number of officials to establish working in Mayobe, and that's why the Mayobe become uh, a public concern. Okay, it is not hidden also the factors that could be as the risk factors for development of myopia. All of us know that or read about the genetic factors, and in some instances, we call it uh, parental myopia, and also the increase of using um, eyes and children for near tasks or near activities. This also was. Uh, suggested or actually it is evidence-based that it is uh, one of the causative factor or risk factor for uh, myopia development. And this factor also will be uh, the health of our topic uh, for tonight. Also increase the use of uh, time indoor without giving chance to child to take time or, or consume time in outdoor activities. Also uh, now in this lockdown, also we use to use artificial light to read or to enjoy our tasks. That will be also dangerous um, and was found to be one of the causative factor, or I guess it to be the causative factor for the development of uh, uh, myopia and diets and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, in spite of all these associations. Uh, the main etiology of, of, of myopia progression was the main and not cover yet. Okay, here we are. We will talk here about the myopia progression theories. And actually, there's a large body of researches that has accumulated over the last century, especially at the last three decades, attempting and aiming to uncover what is behind or what is the story behind the myopia progression. So a series of hypotheses uh, and theories were suggested and proposed. Out of these theories, uh, I will try to talk about the two famous theories. It, uh, Lag of accommodative theory, and the second one, what we call it, peripheral refraction or hyperobic peripheral refraction. So, uh, the accommodative lag, and in simple words, we can just say it is a failure of accommodation, failure of the eye to focus the image uh, into the retina. This is, uh, in brief, the definition of what, what we call it AL or accommodative lag. So the accommodative lag theory, the first theory, is supported by all observations uh, telling that myopes have uh, reduced optical, uh, reduced uh, accommodative uh, response or accommodative demand compared to image drops. When we see the, we look at the uh, graph in the top of the slide, we can see clearly the, the oblique line here is the cursor. Is the cursor working well here? So we can we can see this line represents the, the ideal response of competition uh, in different station of, of distances, starting from distant uh, 33 millimeter, uh, centimeters and 25 uh, millimeters as well. And the accommodation be uh, equal, this is three director and four director. It's going smoothly, uh, obliquely, without any deviation. This the ideal response for endotropic eyes. As for myopic eyes, we can just uh, notice the red line here, and it is declined to down. That means the 
myopia or myopic eyes have reduced negative uh, response compared to uh, emetropic eyes. And also based on the hypothesis that high amount of accommodative lag uh, could be induced during excessive using of myopic eyes for near work could cause central hyperbic defocus or central retinal glare. Okay, I want to take this one here. Okay, so in this figure, as uh, made it of uh, the slide, the when the myopic eye exerting looking at the near task uh, or near objects here for prolonged time, so the accommodation will fail to focus the image on the foveal area. So after long time, the accommodative, uh, accommodative focus delay or what we call it hyperbolic defocus delay will occur. That means the light pass the foveal area to an area behind the retina. Similarly, like the hyperbolic eyes. So what will happen? Uh, what, what, what will be happen now? The eyes start to elongate to overcome this error, and the exposure, uh, like the picture in the down on the bottom of the slide. So the the eyes start to stretch at the back and it become elongate. And as we know, it, it is one of the causative factor of myopia. So uh, it become also uh, constant and remain for a long time. And the distance from the old retina or old fovea to the new fovea will be, will giving us the degree of the myopia progressed. So according to this accommodative lag theory, uh, research just suggested uh, to give under correction for corneal task. I mean that just they subtract the amount of minus power that they us we usually give to our myopic patient. So that means they put them in, in what we call it uh, central myopic defocus. Uh, the light come and cross all the media of the eye and focuses in the, in, uh, the area in front of the the foveal area. So after using prolonged or prolonged or prolonged using the, the eye for concentrating on, on near task, the things that will happen if accommodative lag occurs, the, the light will focus on the retina, not behind it. And they assume that this will be the solution for, for controlling the myopia progression. Others also based on the accommodative lag theory suggested that Without giving this under correction, we can get, they can just uh, introduce uh, addition glasses for near only. So they use their uh, ordinary or the convention lens for this distance. And when they come to read or use their eyes for a long time at near concentration, so the, they just, without subtracting the power, just they use to add some power to these lenses as such as bifocal and progressive additions, so it will also, they found that it will also work. So, uh, based on the AL theory, and uh, as I said, uh, researchers started to work and to find solution by giving under correction for myopic patients. And basically they started uh, their research on animals, uh, such as uh, pigs and mammals, and actually, at that time, they found very great results and to control the myopia. But actually, when they started to do their work with uh, human, the, the results was changed and show uh, bad results. So in this table, I want to show uh, some uh, researches that carried uh, to control uh, the myopia with under correction. The first one was uh, in the USA, one year study. They have a participant and they divided them to three groups. One of the groups, they fully corrected them with the single lens or the ordinary lens. And the other group, they subtract uh, around uh, 25 or 0 0.25 diopter, quarter of diopter. And the cell group, they just subtracted around uh, half diopter. By the end of the year, they found the progression as follows. Those who fully corrected 
the progression of myopia was found to reach around 0.2 diopter. And those who undercorrected this quarter of diopter, they showed progression of uh, 0.29 or 0.3 diopter. And those who uh, undercorrected with half diopter showed a progression of uh, 0.5 diopter. Another study in Malaysia, also they compared between two groups. One of them, one of those group corrected with full correction and the second group under corrected with minus 0.75 diopter. But at the end of the second year, they found that those who full, fully corrected were showed a progression of uh, uh, two thirds of diopter and those who under corrected showed a progression of uh, one diopter. Uh, the last study I presented here is a study in the USA and it is very long study, it took around, it took around six years. And by the end of this study, they found there is significant positive correlation between uncorrelation well, between those who undercorrected and myopia progression. That means when they subtract amount of uh, prescription, the myopia progression will increase. So, What we can take from all these studies, under correcting child refractive error, either increase or has no effect on myopia progression. So that means the, the suggestion of uh, uh, under correcting people or under correcting myopic eyes is no more. That means uh, now we will thinking about other solution and they stop working with the under correction. So, the message here, don't undercorrect your myopic patient. Okay, based on the accountative black theory, as I mentioned earlier in the previous slides, uh, the researchers suggested to use bifocal and progressive glasses instead of uh, uh, undercorrecting people. Uh, and this will be very helpful because the uh, child can use his glass for both distant and near without changing anything. Here is a very interesting table in which I accumulated uh, around five famous and very strong studies in comparing the accommodative, uh, comparing the uh, description of monofocals, bifocals, and ball lenses. The first study took around uh, three years and have three groups. One of the group, one of groups uh, fitted with monofocal, and the second group uh, fitted with bifocal glass, and the third one fitted with bifocal plus prism. At the end of the third year, they found that uh, those who fitted with single lenses, I mean the monofocal lenses, showed a progression of minus two diopter approximation. And those who fitted with Bifocal without prism showed a progression of minus one quarter diopter. And those who fitted with bifocal plus prism based in showed a progression of minus one diopter. The second study also took around uh, two years, uh, aiming aim to, con to find the association or the differences between monofocal and bar lenses, bar lenses instead of progressive addition glasses. So they found that uh, uh, at the end of the study, those who fitted with monofocal lenses showed a progression of minus one quarter diopter, and those who fitted with bar lenses with addition of plus 1.5 diopter showed a progression of two third, approximately two third of diopter. And those who fitted with slightly higher addition, about two diopters showed a progression of uh, 0.65 diopter. The third study here is the famous one, uh, Guyasda, what we call it Guyasda uh, study and it's famous uh, study. Okay, in this study, uh, they uh, find, trying to find the differentiate or different between the monofocal effect and progressive effect. So uh, it was found that 
patients who fitted with uh, the single lens showed a progression of minus 1.5 diopter, and those who fitted with bar lenses, uh, addition 1.5 diopter, showed a progression of what we call uh, around one and quarter diopter. The Piazza study, we call it the COMET study. COMET study is referred to the correction of myopia evaluation trial. And actually, there is two studies, one held in the year 2003 that I presented here, and the second one in the year 2011. The last study here also compared between monofocal and bifocal again, and it was found that those who fitted with monofocal lenses showed a progression by the end of the third year around one quarter diopter, and those who fitted with bifocal uh, additional lenses uh, progress up to around one diopter. So what we can take from here, clinical trials indicate that bifocal and bar lenses can be effective in slowing myopia progression, and it has very great effect uh, for subjects that with near uh, point is euphoria. So when we move to the second theory that I promised to discuss with you, I'm based on this uh, theory, uh, what we call peripheral refractions theory or peripheral, uh, peripheral defocus uh, or hyperbolic defocus theory. And when we look at the uh, diagram at the top of the slide, we can just uh, see the difference here by looking to the red uh, curve and the blue curve. The red curve indicates the, what we call it myopic defocus, and the blue one indicates the, that is the hyperobic uh, defocus. Okay. Uh, how this theory uh, was explained, so we can look at the picture at the bottom of the slide. We usually use the single lens uh, for correcting um, myopia, and this usually it is a, a concave uh, concave lens. So light who come, what, that comes through the center of this lens pass directly to the foveal area without any effect. Uh, but the light who, that came uh, from the periphery of the lens and across all the media of the eye focuses on the area behind the retina, the retina, and this is what we call hyperbolic defocus. So after long standing, uh, and this uh, mechanism occurred when looking to the uh, near subjects, the eye also start to elongate upward, same like that in the acmotic black theory. And also they found that after a long time, the elongation of the eye could in the use, uh, could become rem uh, static and could induce what we call it uh, progression in myopia. So this is the, the second theory, and I will try to explain what new in this. Uh, so Hoya and Polytechnic in Hong Kong, Polytechnic University, start to uh, practice on the based on the peripheral refraction theory. So they design one lens, what we call the DIMS lens, and DIMS is in, instead of the focus integrated uh, multiple segment uh, spectacle lens. They design this lens aiming to uh, overcome the error that uh, could arise from the peripheral refraction, and that could affect uh, the clarity of the image on the retina. So based on this, as they start to design this lens. Before this, actually, they design another lens, soft contact lens. They call it uh, disc lens. And the disc lens is, instead of uh, the focus incorporated multiple segment uh, soft contact lens. And that one, if I, remember, if I remember well, in the year 2014, yes. And they found it very effective in controlling of myopia. So they think that if we have this chance with soft contact lens, why we not think about uh, a spectacle lens for uh, safety of uh, their patients? So they designed the DIMS lens. And actually, uh, 
we mean myopia and the astigmatism that could, arrive, could uh, come with myopia. And the periphery or the mid periphery of the lens uh, consists of multi segment of uh, constant myopic focus surrounding the central zone and uh, it is tending to the mid periphery of the lens. So, these segments, the responsibility of it is just to cut that light uh, from being uh, focused at the periphery of the retina. And we can see very clearly in the, the image at the top of this slide, this is how the dim lens work. Light who comes to the center of the lens could pass directly to the foveal area without any interruptions, without any problem. But light who comes to the mid periphery area or, or through the mid periphery area will go directly to the periphery of the retina, but will not exceed it. It will be shifted to uh, focus on the retina or little bit in front, little bit more in front of the retina. So uh, the dim's lens was not fully studied yet because uh, there is one only one single uh, study that held by Professor Carly Lam. She is one of the cleverest uh, professor in optometry in from the. Uh, Polytechnic University in Hong Kong, and I visited the lady before around uh, 10 years, maybe ago. And that time they started to, st uh, to, to, to design this lens. So Professor Karila and her colleagues uh, did one single study and they collected around 160 uh, uh, school child from Hong Kong, their age range between eight and 13 years of old, and they divided them to uh, two groups. One of the groups fitted with dim lens, and the second group uh, fitted with single vision lens, the conventional lens. After two years of study and follow-up, they measured the degree of myopia for both groups, as well as the axial lens using the uh, A master. So they found that those who fitted with dim lens showed a progression of minus 0.4 diopter, and those who fitted with single lens showed a progression of minus one diopter, uh, which is very significant difference between the two groups. However, in terms of uh, axial lens, uh, it was found that those who fitted with Dim's lens showed elongation of only 0.2 millimeter, and those who fitted with their conventional lens, they showed uh, increase in the axial lens of uh, around 0.5 millimeter. Uh, based on the peripheral refraction theories of theory also, the Zeiss company also introduced a new lens for myopia management. Well, they call it myovision spectacles or myovision lens uh, for myopia control. And actually, we didn't find any studies that uh, evaluate this lens yet, but it is being expected that by the uh, next few years, they will start to study this lens and give us their results. This is the two techniques that use uh, the peripheral refraction theory for controlling myopia, the Hoya and uh, or the technical university studies and designs and the dice designs. So there is uh, another uh, control strategy uh, available, uh, not only the optical way, not only the spectacle way, but also uh, optically we can use soft contact lenses, uh, bifocal lenses or progressive, progressive lenses or multifocal lenses. And also we can use also cryptology lenses. Uh, besides the spectacle management, this is the optical, the only optical ways available up to now. And there is also studies talking about the environmental factors and how they control the environment or environmental factors to slow the myopia progression. And also we know that atropine is one of the uh, control strategies that available now. 
So what I want to say as a conclusion of this presentation uh, is that none of all majority control methods and strategies have been proven to help to, to stop the development of, uh, of myopia completely. However, all these methods show it, showing the slowing of progression, but also each of, the, of these uh, methods also have had its limitation. That means we cannot use all these methods with all our patients, so we have to do selection. And as I said, no uh, completely uh, controlling of myopia. What we do in, by all these strategies, we just control or we just slow the progression of myopia. I think I'm done. And this are some of references uh, that I use in this uh, lecture for your benefits of you or if you need to find more about the strategies of myopia control. And thank you.